All right, how you guys doing? Miss Muskrom Pythagoras still hanging out, getting ready to bring you examples seven and eight. So let's check this out. Now, before we get into these examples, we got some rules we got to go over. Cause you know, math's got a lot of rules. Sometimes you're gonna be as to like classify triangles. Is a triangle right? Is it acute or is it obtuse? But we gotta remember this other piece by no triangles. So the first thing you want to do is check it out. Do the small and medium, and that's what I use S and M for, and I'll small, medium, large. Do the two smaller sides add up to be more than whatever the biggest side is, which would always be your hypotenuse if it is a right triangle. Then we move on to the second step and figure out how to classify this right acute or obtuse. If small and medium is not more than large, we're done. We don't have enough. Our side lengths are not enough to give us a triangle, so we don't even have a triangle. We don't have to do any of this Pythagorean theorem business. But in the event that we do, let's check it out. If c squared equals a squared plus b squared, then we know that we have a right triangle. All right, pretty straightforward. Now, the one I'm going to give you next, if c squared is greater, that's going to be an obtuse triangle. And then if c squared is less than a squared plus b squared, then that's going to be an acute triangle. Now to keep these two these two formulas straight, right is pretty straightforward. We've got that one down. But to remember the obtuse and the acute, which one the hypotenuse squared is greater, which one the hypotenuse squared is less. So when you write it this way, you can kind of use this. Greater starts with the letter G. Obtuse starts with the letter O. So if c squared is greater than the sum of the squares of the legs, that makes the word go. That's just one way to I remember it. Now if it's less than, if c squared is less than a squared plus b squared, I have less than and acute. So I end up with this little phrase, go LA. So if you like the LA Kings or any other sports team in LA, or maybe you want to be a Hollywood movie star and end up in LA, go to LA. Greater, obtuse, less than, acute. And otherwise, you're right. If, a, if c squared equals a squared plus b squared. But maybe you're not right because small and medium don't add up to large and you got no triangle. So let's kind of take a look at this and see what we got. Now, here in example number seven, we've got to make sure that this triangle, so the first thing we do, it looks like nine and 15 are the small and medium sides and three root 34. So let's kind of estimate this. Square root of 34 is really close to square root of 36. So if I had three times the square root of 36. The square root of 36 is six. So it's three times six, this part would give you 18. Well, square root of 34 is a little bit less than six. So three times a little bit less than six would be a little bit less than 18. So that's going to be my largest side. Now, if I add up nine and 15, those two values are definitely going to give me something more than a little bit less than 18. So I do have a triangle, so then I got to get after it and figure out if it's a right triangle, acute triangle, or obtuse triangle. And this is how I want you guys to set this up. Check it out. I'm going to write c squared, and then I'm going to leave a little line, and then a squared plus b squared. Now, Sometimes people put a circle there, other times I just want you to leave a line. Now for c squared, so that's going to be 3 times the square root of 34. All of that's going to be squared. And I got my line a squared, so that's 9 squared plus 15 squared. Now 9 squared and 15 squared, that's pretty easy to do. That part, 9 squared is going to give you 81, 15 squared gives you 225. So that is no big deal. But this is where sometimes people freak out. And they're like, man, how do I do this? So 3 squared, let me just do these separately. 3 squared is 9. Now if I have the square root of 34, and I square that, that just gives me 34. So then what I have to do is multiply 9 and 34 together. So if I multiply those two terms together, 9 times 4 is 36. And I've got 3 left over. 9 times 3 is 27 and add three more, I get 30. So this piece on the left, I get 306. Now if I add up 81 and 225, I get 306. So what do we know about 306 and 306? Bam, they're equal. So that means this triangle is a right triangle. So then we just write right triangle. Bam, we done. All right, so here we go in example number eight. 
Now, if I look at my three sides, 22, 14, and 26, the largest side is 26. So since that's my largest side, I need to add up to 22 and 14 to make sure that their sum is more than 26. And 22 plus 14 gives you 36, and 36 is definitely more than our largest side of 26. So with that said, we can go ahead and test to see if we have a right triangle. Now, with this said, I'm sure you guys can probably hit pause and do this on your own. Then come back, check your work, and I'm sure that you've got this one right. So there that is. 676, we compare that to the sum of 484 and 196, and when we find that sum, we get 680, and 676 is definitely not equal to 680. So, in this example, number 8, this is not a right triangle. And in fact, we could classify that, and more on that in the next examples, 9 through 13, we would be able to classify that as a, a two sort of cute triangle and if you look up there at our little formulas I'm sure you could figure that one out but that's not what we were asked to do we're only asked to tell whether the triangle is a right triangle so we've answered a question not a right triangle and that's it so more on classifying triangles is obtuse and acute in the next video so make sure you watch that to get down to examples 9 through 13 which take you through that alright thanks for watching this one I'll see you guys real soon peace out yo